I really missed. I missed hugging my friends. And that connection can be so touch. It can be through singing nursery rhymes. Yeah. Um, and actually, I, miss, I, miss I can't imagine how, how people could not want to just touch out I don't think I'm a very touchy person. I love um, when I was young and I used to hate little children. To have a little child, 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 and she will clasp it. And the same with her toes. Her feet are so funny. You put your finger on the sole of her foot. Her little toes try and clump around it. It's really funny. You know, I'm quite really introverted in a way, so um, I, I think I'm working on being like more affectionate in person. Because I don't have any level of communication, so I am uh, taking lockdown without that, you know, avoiding some of your facial expressions, being like sort of living on my own. It's very interesting how you communicate. Like, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I think definitely hugs provide an isolation and a very, you know, non-verbal communication is quite important. Sometimes people don't actually the only real kind of connection I have with my family is like just Skype. It's just a lot. So like, it's not the same. It's not that kind of closure. to make me not frightened about it and so the importance of touching is absolutely critical and after I touched him and seen how peaceful he was I was able to move on a bit you wouldn't think it now but actually it helped but I couldn't believe it until I touched him and given him my love in that way it was really important to stroke his hair I never forget it and I would always recommend that to people. <laughs> That's a bit of a difficult one. And look, you're touching my hand now. Yeah. Because your instinct is to reach out. It's to flip the switch before something breaks it cannot. Is I will remember. I remember how you made me feel, and I've really seen this. For example, I, I went to see this mum, and she would kind of. I'd go to see her um, normally about three o'clock on a Wednesday, and there was no way that she would go. Oh, it's five to three. Joanne's going to be here, and we're going to listen to some music and have a hand massage, and that's really lovely, and it's nearly time. Not at all. But when she saw me, she probably didn't even know my name was. Joanne, and she probably didn't even realize I was with her. But what she did do was she held her hands out and smiled because she, mmm, hand massage, something lovely, oh, her, yes, nice things. And actually, that was an inc and smiling, and that was incredibly powerful. So it was the emotion that she associated with me that, that she remembered. And if that ever happens, um, it's, it's, it's incredibly powerful. I don't yeah. So, if you see somebody with very, very advanced dementia, they they almost become completely closed. Um, that is because they feel completely isolated um, and completely withdrawn from everything. Um, nonetheless, it is still possible to make that connection, and that connection can be through touch. 
It can be through singing nursery rhymes. Um, and actually, I'll send you the link. There is... I mean, the first thing we do is have a hug. And when you go out, we have a hug. Or we have a hug when you, when, you can, when you get up in the morning. So it would be absolutely impossible for me to live without touching and hugging. I found that incredibly lonely being on my own for the lockdown, having nobody there to hug, talk to. Our hugs are that much deeper than conversations or just work on a very different level of communication. And so without that, particularly in lockdown, without that, you know, point about facial expressions being fully open. It's very interesting how you communicate. Yeah, I think definitely hugs provide a very you know, non-verbal communication which is quite unique. Hello, Mark! Hello, Mark! Hello, Okay, right. Suddenly 